Hi, this is Simon Obstall, and today I'm going to interrupt my series of five things that are wrong with Apple Motion to bring you one good thing about Apple Motion. So someone in the comments complained that Motion doesn't allow you to do pre-comps, and while this at first glance seems to be true, it's not in fact true, and the reality is a lot more interesting as I'm going to show you. So anyone familiar with After Effects will know that pre-comps are a pretty key part of the workflow. And a pre-comp is quite simply a composition inside a composition. So here is the pre-comp of my background. I've got a gradient over the dirty glass. And here is my master comp. And you can see there's my pre-comp down here. I can turn on and off. And I've got a pre-comp for the text, which has got the shape layer and the text itself. So a composition is essentially a self-contained stack of layers, and that's also exactly what a pre-comp is. If you're more familiar with Final Cut, you can think of a pre-comp as being the same as a compound clip. It's a basic container, just like a nest in Premiere or Media Composer or whatever. You can treat the result as a new piece of media. So I'll come to our master comp here. You see I've actually animated the text here as part of the pre-comp, because that means that the box and the text work together. I could also just add, for example, a levels to it, and we could adjust the color. So we can add any effects that we want to them. We can obviously trim the length of the pre-comp. We can split it, so we can come to edit split layer. You can see now we've got two halves that I can retreat independently, and we can also retime it. So lots that we can do because we've got this pre-comp structure. And obviously the other thing that is worth noting is that if we come to the project folder, these pre-comps actually live inside the project like this. So if I wanted to make a new composition, I could just drag in my background from the project folder, and we can start again using this pre-comp as the basis for the new comp. So all of that is pretty useful. And the question, I suppose, is why doesn't Motion have the same thing? Well, of course, Motion does, in fact, have the same thing, only it's called something different. And it's actually a lot better. And pre-comps in Motion are quite simply groups. There's literally no function of a pre-comp that is not replicated by a Motion group. But motion groups are actually more flexible and useful than pre-comps. So just like an After Effects pre-comp, a motion group is a self-contained stack of layers. So here is the group with my background, and you can see it's got two layers in it. Again, the dirty glass and the gradient, and my text group is exactly the same as, as it was in After Effects. So just like a pre-comp, you can treat a motion group like it's a new piece of media. So you can add filters to it. So here's our background. Let's come to color levels and adjust the background color. We can trim the length of the group, just like this. And from the video timeline, we can also split a group like this. So that's now split into two pieces, exactly like in After Effects. And we can even retime a group. And I'm gonna come onto that in a moment. But the huge advantage that motion groups have over After Effects pre-comps is that they are open and accessible where pre-comps are closed. So if we come back to After Effects, so here's our master comp. If we want to come in and adjust anything in the pre-comp, we actually have to dive into the pre-comp itself. So if we want to adjust this background, we have to open up the background. So if we wanted to disable that gradient, for example, we have to do that like that, and then we can come back to our master comp and see what it looks like. So we're actually having to kind of dive backwards and forwards between the master comp and the pre-comps. And yes, of course, there are workarounds, but they're not exactly elegant, and they're nothing like as good as in motion. So let's come back to motion and make the point that there's no kind of diving in here we can see everything in context. So if I wanted to adjust that levels, I can do it in the context of the overall comp. 
like this. And of course, the same thing is true with Final Cut uh, compound clips. You're having to dive into a different composition effectively than the main one. But the thing with motion groups is that they're not like that at all because they're open and you can do whatever you want within the context of the overall composition. And to my mind, there's no question that this openness of motion groups makes for faster and better creative decisions because you're not having to do kind of clunky diving around. But you may well have two questions at this point. And the first is, how do you retime a motion group? Well, the answer is very simple. So supposing I wanted to take this text group animation and reverse it. So all I need to do is I need to group that. So pre-comp the pre-comp and then make a clone of it, turn off the original group. And now with this clone, I can use any of the retiming behaviors. So I can simply use reverse and now the animation is in reverse. And of course, we don't have to do it from there. We can do it from the timing here. But once you've made a clone, you've got a, lo a lot of options. And then you can also feed the clone into a replicator and then the replicator's timing controls will react as though it's video. And that's where things get really interesting, but I'm not going to go into that here and I've shown that in numerous tutorials already. But basically cloning turns motion groups into pre-comps with rocket boosters and it becomes an amazingly powerful and flexible workflow. And the second question is where can I store my pre-comps? So obviously, in the case of After Effects, they're stored in the main project folder here. And at first glance, you'd think you can't actually do the same sort of thing in motion. But in fact, you can, and it works really rather well. You can come over to the library and favorites, and the favorites really can be treated like a project folder. So I've already put a couple of alternative versions of uh, these groups into here. So I can actually drag in my alt background like that. But if I wanted to store this background, let me show you how to do it. I'm just going to drag it into this folder that I've made there. There it is. If I want to delete that and then I oh, actually want it back. I can bring it in like that. So you can actually organize the favorites folder in exactly the same way you do a projects folder and it's a pretty useful workflow to know about because it actually allows you to access this stuff across m different projects as well. But that's probably a step too far for this, but um, th that might be something for another tutorial. To sum up, motion groups are today's one good thing about motion. The original developers absolutely nailed it with this concept in my view, giving you the functionality of After Effects pre-comps but with extra openness and flexibility and potential that I think totally gives motion the edge. Anyway, thanks very much indeed for watching. I hope to see you again soon.